Hi and welcome back to the channel. This week's problem is about trying to find the green area inside of this square. Now as you can see we've got two triangles that make two white areas. Really we're going to be subtracting those from the area of the square to get this green area here and we've got two line segments E to C which is length 3 and E to F which is length 2. Can you solve this problem and can you find the green area? If you think you can and you want to have a go, pause the video now. Otherwise, I'm going to go through my solution in three, two, one. Okay, so the first thing that I wanted to do here is I wanted to start labeling some of these angles. So I've labeled the angle ECD or DCE as theta. Now, Angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, so take away 90, take away theta, and we get left with the other angle, which is 90 minus theta. Now, angles on a straight line also add to 180 degrees, so take away 90 minus theta, take away the right angle, and we get left with theta again. Now, the angle EF a is also going to be 90 minus theta by the same logic because again there's 180 degrees in a triangle and subtract the 90 subtract the theta okay now what we've got here are two triangles afe and edc which are similar triangles because they have got all the same angles inside of them and so what we can do is we can start to look at and compare the side lengths of those triangles but I'm going to call, first of all, the side length of our square and equally the side length of our larger triangle, DC or CD, I'm going to call that X. Now, let's compare these triangles. Okay, now, going from the larger triangle to the smaller triangle, and I'm going to do it that way around because I've got the side length of my square on my bigger triangle as X. So, from 3 to 2, I'm going to multiply by 2 thirds. So, that's my scale factor. So, going from the base of my larger triangle to the base of my smaller triangle, I'm again going to multiply by 2 thirds. So, that is going to be 2 thirds X. So if we go back to our diagram now, that two-thirds x is from a to e. Now we know the side length of the square is x, and so e to d must be one-third x. Two-thirds add one-third is a whole. Now let's go back and compare those triangles again. Now we know the scale factor is two-thirds from the larger one to the smaller one. So let's compare these left-hand sides of each triangle. So again, the scale factor is multiplied by two-thirds. Two-thirds times by one-third is going to give us two-ninths. So two-ninths x. Again, we go back and we put that on the original diagram. So a to f is two-ninths of, two of x. Now that is on there quite small, uh, but it is two-ninths of x. And we know again that the full length, so a to b, would be x. So we do x, or a whole, one, take away two-ninths. Uh, and that would give us 7 ninths. So F to B is 7 ninths of X. Okay. Now from there, we've got quite a lot of the lengths on here, which needs something to compare and to, to give us an equation we can then work out the value of X with. So what we're going to do is I'm going to draw this line here from F to C, and I've got a right angle triangle, FEC. So I'm going to find the length of F to C by doing Pythagoras. I'm going to do the square root of 2 squared add 3 squared to get the hypotenuse F to C. Now that gives an answer of root 13, so I'm going to put that on the diagram now. And I know that my right hand side of my square, well, it's a square, so it's got to have the same side length, which has to be X. Now I'm going to look at triangle FBC. And I know because it's a right angle triangle again, that seven ninths X squared plus X squared square rooted is equal to root 13 by Pythagoras. Okay, so seven ninths x squared is 49 over 81 x squared add an x squared is 130 over 81 x squared square both sides of the, that equation and we're going to get 130 over 81 x squared is equal to 13 times both sides by 81 and then it's equal to 1053 divide by 130 we get x squared is 81 over 10. 
square rooting both sides, we get x is 9 root 10 over 10. Now from this point, we've pretty much got it. We just need to do the last little bits. So I'm going to put this to one side. I'm not going to write 9 root 10 over 10 everywhere on the diagram because it's going to get a little bit messy. So we're just going to put that to one side. And then we're going to start to calculate the area of both of these green triangles. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate FBC. So that's a half times by the base times by the height. So I'm going to do a half times F to B, 7 ninths X, times by B to C, which is X. And I'm then going to add on a half of 3 times by 2. Okay? Or 2 times by 3. Doesn't matter which way around it is because multiplication is commutative. Right. And commutative, if you're not sure what that means, just basically means you can write the, uh, the numbers either way around and it's still exactly the same. Right. So from there, the first bit is going to give me something really quite nice, which is 63 over 20. Now I've swapped around the two and the three because a half of two is one. So we're just going to get left with three as the area of FEC, that triangle. Add those two together and we're going to get a final answer of 123 over 20 units squared, which is a pretty nice answer. I think we don't end up with any awkward decimals. We've got a fraction, not a whole number, but a fraction, a pretty nice answer. Uh, if you got this answer and you did it yourself and use a different solution, please put it down and share it in the comments below. And if you use the same solution, again, put it down in the comments below and like this video. Uh, and all that's left to say is thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like on this video and please consider subscribing to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. I'll release a new problem solving video or I will release a new problem solving video next Monday at 5pm. So until then, bye bye.